Welcome to Paranormal Playground with your host, Paranormal Nick. This episode is a Dead Squirrel in the Woods Productions. So this week, I want to do something a little different than our usual haunted location deep dives. Um, so I recently posed a question on Facebook about three weeks ago. Can animals see spirits? Well... The response was overwhelming. Um, I actually doubled followers on the podcast page, and this prompted me to kind of dig deeper into the phenomena. Um, so I went to Google, and I came up with, um, found articles on ghost pets to spirit energy sensitivity in animals and more so I did get a little off topic about ghost pets and pets that have come back but um, I think it's a very kind of goes hand in hand with this but before I go into the content and what I found um, starting sometime in 2024 probably January I am going to be having a rock show on a online radio platform called FZLH, which is Fuzzy Little Heart Radio. Um, you can go to FZLHradio.com to listen to what is on there. That is actually local music from eastern Wisconsin. Um, so... In that show, my goal is to rock your normal. Um, so if you like rock music and you want to learn about some new artists that are not signed uh, to a major record label, um, go on and listen there. Normally the rock is played around 9 p.m. to about 3 a.m. So, And there is other styles of music as well. Um, another thing, our D, uh, DSW Paranormal team, uh, recently did an investigation at the old Glumbula School, and it was a very interesting investigation. Um, still downloading the footage and the video and audio from that. But uh, late the, later in January, we are going to be doing the Oshkosh Opera Theater, and hopefully we get some good stuff there, and some of these locations I can get some good video packages out of to share with all of you. But let's get into the episode itself now. So... Here are some common antidotes from pet owners, and um, who you know said that they have experienced their animals seeing a ghost, or yeah. So, um, so the. First one, let's see, what one should I start with here? Um, this one says, My sister died in a car accident. Her old calico cat that she'd rescued as a stray began acting odd. Chloe would stare intensely at my sister's bed for hours while meowing mournfully late at night. I discover Chloe curled up on the pillow, purring like someone was petting her. It was clear my sister's spirit had returned, and only Chloe could fully perceive her loving ghost. So, there's no names in half of the, or no, like, last names or locations, but um, these are, this is common behavior for, to, that people think their pets have seen a ghost. Jimmy was a joyful family dog until he accompanied my kids into my deceased mother-in-law's empty guest room one day. Hackles raised, 
he stared under the bed and snarled viciously when af my kids screamingly ran out jimmy stayed behind barked at the unseen adversary ever since he refused to enter the be that bedroom which remains inexplicably cold perhaps an unwanted ghostly guest is lingering now i'm doing this episode as my cat is she really loves my desk and whenever i'm sitting at it so she is walking back and forth uh, against my legs <sighs> so might be a little distracted as i try to maybe keep her quiet so so now this one is my horse was riding no my horse is at the riding stable have been extremely jittery lately spooking easily and avoiding certain fields um that once held their interest so one behavior is they're not going where they normally would have it started after a tragic training accident claimed the life of a young teen girl now the horses refuse to approach those fatal slopes their alert eyes trace something human vision fails to see the restless spirit of a rider cut down too soon when we moved into my grandfather's old victorian home our dog rosie would spend hours growling at the empty corner of the master bedroom her heckles raised teeth bared at some invisible intruder at night she barked fiercely charging at the spot that held her unwavering glare everyone in the family felt watched in that room so that poses another question do you ever feel watched well i think we can cover that in another one though um it turns out it was haunted by my grandmother no wonder sweet rosie played guard dog against her ghost my tabby cat misery is usually lazy and aloof i kind of like the name misery for a cat um another side thing i do is theater and i actually stage managed one of those sh show misery by stephen king so it's kind of an interesting name but after my mechanic husband died in the garage misery changed she refused to go inside hissing at thin air amid the tools and unfinished projects oddly the cars would randomly turn on and headlights blazing sounds to me like there's something going on there so misery does sees my late husband tinkering though i feel his presence the cat witnesses his lingering spirit now those are types of testimonials i got um based on animal seeing ghosts so um as i was searching i found an article on psychologytoday.com from end of august 2017 this one talks about dogs and the title of it was can dogs detect ghosts spirits or hallucinations by a phd stanley cohan cohan now this talks about dogs but i mean in general this could cover a lot of different animals um so but this is some of this stuff is specific to dogs so okay so based on the interaction I, I put out um, one of the oldest beliefs is dogs are able to see ghosts or spirits um, now I think cats can too and I have cats more we don't really have the time for dogs but 
um, we're going to focus this on dogs because a survey was conducted around that time of the article around August 2017 of a thousand pet owners and 47% of dog owners believed that their dogs warned them of impeding bad news. This gives a whole new meaning to me for man's best friend. Uh, some behaviors to look out for. Uh, one would be hiding in a safe place, whining, whimpering, hyperactive or erratic behavior. Let's see here, ah, persistent barking. Um, now, this depends on the dog as well, because as you know, all animals have their own, um, what do you want to say, personality. So, um, you know, I would, some of these are hints that that's possible and just some of these animals do this naturally anyway and it's not because of paranormal uh, occurrences. So, you have to be able to discern what that is. Um, now, um, do I have any cat owners out there? Well, this next subject's for you. Well, we have multiple cats in our house, so um, just like dogs, they are unique. One of our cats is lazy. One of the, some of them just talk all the time. Some don't want to be held. Uh, some just want to recognize you, but if you pick them up, like they want to be put back right down. They want to have control. Um, just like the one that was walking around my legs. She will come up to you when she wants to, but she doesn't want to be held. So, you know, they're just like us. They have different personalities. Now, this article comes from catster.com. Can cats see ghosts? Spirits in the supernatural. The truth unveiled. Uh, this comes actually from November of this year, uh, of 2023. Quincy Miller. Cat owners often observe their pets staring intently at some invisible entity or empty space. Just the other day, um, we were watching TV and my cat was just sitting on the couch and she and he was just staring up into the corner of the wall. Um, now, I don't don't think we have any ghosts in here, but um, he kept staring up there. Um, so, could it be paranormal or are they just staring at empty space? Some seem they're seemingly transfixed on, transfixed on something unseen, right? Well, this behavior prompts the question, are cats detecting ghosts? demons, or other supernatural beings that humans can't perceive. Well, that is an intriguing thought. There is no solid evidence to confirm or deny this hypothesis. Um, it has been thought that cats can see spirits, but there is no conclusive proof. Now, the fundamental problem is that the science is still not proven that ghosts exist or other paranormal entities. Um, this is according to the author. Um, from the experiences I've had ghost hunting and going to locations, um, I believe there's something out there um, that can be good and bad. Um, it could be human or animal, demon, entity, whatever. Um, so, personally, I believe they exist. But this is from that that was from the perception of the author so we so we can't test if cats can see them until more conclusive proof of spooks emerges well we can't cats can't we don't know what cats are actually seeing so that is more what we can't prove i think however cats do possess superior natural senses over humans with wider visions or fields of visions 
Um, they also have ultraviolet light detection. Um, and they can hear at higher frequencies. This allows cats to spot things imperceptible to us, like lingering urine smells or high-pitched electrical noises. So, while your cat's creepy trance may be induced by supernatural stimuli, and it is possible, um, that would, I mean, if you got the equipment, you could find out. Um, it's more likely that they are captivated by mundane sights and sounds outside human sensory. Um, their transient behavior suggests harmless curiosity rather than encountering threatening phantoms. Um, if there was something threatening, I'm sure um, it's most likely you would be experiencing some weird stuff too. So. Nonetheless, cats can fully, can't fully grasp when stimuli are harnessless. Okay, um, trifles versus uh, potential perils. So they can't tell if it's harmless or bad. So um, you could reassure your cat when they seem perturbed by examining the environment, observe the demon to demonstrate no real danger exists. With some calming cues from you, your cat will likely relax and resume normal antics. Um, the reality is that we may never know if felines share their ability to glimpse the undead, but we can only speculate. Um, and I would think that it is possible that they do. So that's what I found um, just on cats and dogs. And I would think this goes for a lot of the other animals as well out there. Um, they do have a heightened sense of things that we can't see or sense. So I would say pay attention to your animals. Um, or you could do like uh, Renee Tweed who commented on the post that um, she says, yes, I do. I like to ghost hunt and take my dog with me. They sense the spirit before any of my equipment detects them, and you can tell whether they are good or bad by the way the dog reacts. <sighs> Sorry, I just had to get a drink there. Um, so... Um, with, you know, that's, um, that's what I found just, um, in general. I don't want to go too in depth on this. Um, this is more kind of a informal thing. Um, it's now you're probably wondering, what do I think? Well, I kind of alluded to that earlier, but do think there's ghosts out there and I do think animals can see them um, this brings to the topic though ghost pets now if you believe in ghosts and we believe humans can come back and interact with us right do you think animals can well I think so and I went down that rabbit hole and I found an interesting article. Um, it was on ranker.com and it's 11 pets who've returned as ghosts to help or haunt their owners. Um, and this was an article by Scott Marcano uh, from September 2021. Now, this first story comes from Hollywood. Now, I have not acted in a Hollywood film, but I have acted in short films and on in theater stages. So <coughs> this one kind of interested me, actually, because, um, you know, they were, um, it was a actor's portrayal or actor's experience. Um, so let's, um, now, 
This one occurs before I was even born. This was a show I don't remember ever watching, but um, it comes from 1972 from a show that was very popular in the, in the 70s, The Brady Bunch. The show did an episode in 1972 called Fright Night. Now, after hearing this story, I kind of want to see if I can find this episode, but um, that's that's not the story. Um, so when filming this episode, the cast was set up in a local bed and breakfast. Actor Christopher Knight, otherwise known as Peter Brady, said this B&B was on the creepy side. So the cast was up late telling ghost stories. I guess that's what you do when you're at a creepy location. Um, like campfires... Haunted hotels, I guess you sit up and tell ghost stories. I don't know. Um, I mean, I was in Boy Scouts, and I, I'm sure when we did our summer camp or, you know, campouts, we, we told our ghost stories. Um, now, after a late night of the ghost stories in this creepy bed and breakfast, Knight says, okay, well... He woke up in the middle of the night to an interesting sight. He says that there were two hunting dogs at the foot of his bed. Now, if that's not bad enough, there's more to this. There was a little girl staring at him in the doorway. Neither made a sound, and yet somehow he just went back to sleep. Now, I mean, on my investigations, I've done some, you know, things that other people would not do. Um, like, go into areas or that just kind of iffy, but that's you know neither here nor there so now upon the next day he would tell the owner what happened the owner upon hearing this took him to the fireplace and showed him the two dogs depicted on a metal fire guard on the fireplace as it happens these dogs are the ones he saw this the little girl is a mystery that is not covered in the story so um yeah i don't have anything to say on that but um it is unknown if these dogs existed or if they didn't but my guess is they did why else would there be images of them on a metal fire guard in the fireplace so yep that's just me now, this story coming up was also in um, Paranorm.com, Legend of Blue Dog, the Oldest American Ghost Story by Ellie Zed from March of 2021. This just went into a little more detail than the, the Ranker one. So I got information kind of off of both. All right, sorry, I just need a drink there. <clears throat> um, it's a little rough today, so. Um, a ghostly garden, guardian's unpending patrol, Maryland's legend of the loyal blue dog. Now, along a lonely road in to Port Tobacco, Maryland, wanders the spirit of a devoted dog who has protected his master's treasure for over two centuries known as the blue dog this phantom canine with eerie sapphire fur still patrols the area where his owner charles thomas sims was robbed and murdered one icy night long ago so as the story goes in 1658 sims stopped at a local tavern 
with sacks of newly acquired gold coins and the deed to land he had just purchased as a soldier. After too much drinky drink, well, as commonly done, he unwisely boasted of his fortune to shady strangers. One named Henry Hainos plotted with cronies to follow Sims to steal his riches after he departed. Under the cold moon, they ruthlessly killed Sims and his blue tick coonhound companion. Now, they put up a good fight, okay? But in the end, it was a fall from Sims when he, where he hit his head on a rock. That was his demise. So, Hanos hastily burned the loot, or buried the loot, beneath a holly tree before fleeing. When he returned days later, a ghastly blue hound with glowing eyes protected his spot, chasing off the terrified thief. Before long, guilt ridden Hanos actually or allegedly perished himself from illness. So karma kind of came back and got him. But the faithful phantom dog keeps watch over his master's gold, howling mournfully each year on the February anniversary of Sim's murder beside their collapsed bones. Some claim America's first president heard these haunted bays haunting bays from a nearby mansion and into modern times eerie sight sightings persist of the blue dog defiantly patrolling the wooded path known as rose hill road ever vigilant in preserving his duty in death and in life and there is actually a bar um in uh in there as well or there as well so um the blue dog bar uh that you could go see so looking at the time here we're at about 30 some minutes um let's see what i have left before we do too much or go too long um I've got one more for you. We'll end on, let's see, which one do I want to do? How about, yeah, we're going to do this one. www.atlasobscura.com had an article called Why the U.S. Capitol's Demon Cat Legend is so persistent. Now, this is a legend. Um, there is some doubt in this one. But it's kind of a fun legend, so I figured this is a good one to do. With in the hallowed grounds of the U.S. Capitol building in the halls, a ghostly legend has crept through the shadows over a century. Tales of a phantasmal demon cat stalking unweary guards and visitors. Though accounts vary, most describe a black cat appearing normal size before morphing, morphing into a giant snarling beast. Steve Livingood, chief tour guide for the U.S. Capitol Historical Society, has extensively researched the myth. He traced the first. He traces now. The first sighting was somewhere between 1860s and the 1870s when the building's night watchmen, often drunkards appointed through nepotism, and in the history that I've looked, um, back then, yes, there was a lot of nepotism in filling cabinet positions or jobs in when, um, when you got elected. So, um, now, 
this encounter kind of is they were in an in an inebriated state so how credible is this it, that i mean that's up to you now um in their inebriated state this likely caused the harmless cat to be seen monstrous yet inexplic inexplicable evidence lent the legend credibility eerie cat paws embedded in the concrete floor and claw marks spelling dc while living good doubts any paranormal origins he sees the myth as a charming part of the capital's living history the demon cat imagined or real reminds us of legions of people who served and led our nation throughout its halls their spirits metaphorically live on through such fantasyful tales passed between generations keeping human connections alive even if fearsome cats remain wholly mythical so next time you visit congress hallowed grounds you may run into a mythical beast said to stalk its past now you may run into the demon cat but um it's i think it's another tale just kind of told now so we are i think i think i've covered what we what i want to cover um we're past that 30 minute mark so i think we should keep this at a decent length to so um so with that i hope you enjoyed this episode of paranormal playground with paranormal nick um so remember if you want to listen to some local Wisconsin music, you can go to fzlhradio.com, where I will be starting up a one-hour rock program, uh, and be on the lookout for DSW Paranormal Investigators footage, uh, where we are braving the cold weather this winter this has been a dead squirrel in the woods productions be sure to like and subscribe for notifications for new content and follow us on facebook for questions pose for future episodes or discussions Thank you.